we're driving right now. Where's Michelle? We're leaving St. Augustine and we're heading to where? Wrightsville, North Carolina. Wrightsville, North Carolina, seven hours away. There's a... <clears throat> High Star. High Star, Taiwanese trawler. Uh, our friends David and Amy on Sail Away, they have a High Star. It's a nice boat. It's got nice wood inside, built really well. Um, this one has a cockpit. This has a cockpit on the back, motor yacht, uh, two staterooms, and um, two Pro heads. Propane. Oh, not propane. No, it does not propane. It's two uh, Caterpillar 3208s, 375 horsepower, so that's that's good. So we're going to go look at it. We talked to the broker. He said, come on up. We got two days to get up there, or uh, two days to get up and back, because we got a uh, doctor appointment on Wednesday and Thursday, so it's going to be a fast trip. We'll spend one day, spend the night, come back the next day. Thank you for visiting Florida. It's uh, you're welcome. Welcome to the Peach State. Welcome to South Carolina. Stopped at Love's for fuel. We're halfway there. So South D border. Pedro says you never saw sausage a place. Welcome to North Carolina. Nation's most military friendly state. Wrightsville Beach. Wrightsville Beach. We looked at this boat yesterday. Uh, we're going to come back and check it out again today. So, what we noticed yesterday were uh, blisters on the hull, starboard side. Some rusty portholes. Some. Um, Corrosion, not corrosion, uh, rot, like well, water damage. So we were like, eh, I don't know, kind of got turned off by it. But we did find aluminum fuel tanks, which these Taiwanese boats usually have steel tanks that rust. So all the tanks are aluminum, and that's a good thing. Yeah, we'll see if Stella can get on board. scratched up like the boat was in a storm like big gouges through the gel coat so I don't know if you can see those blisters there's hundreds actually hundreds along here there's a couple big ones so it's a big boat it's 55 feet which is really bigger than we wanted, but you know, it's got the same size engines. I think the uh, the hull speed would be really good with those engines running about 12 to 1300 RPM, maybe. Should cruise right along. Um, there's some spider web cracking in some spots, gel coats. Not much there. So we're thinking if we had the blisters all done, we'd have to paint the whole boat, basically. That would be a big expense. Let's go inside and I'll show you around. The thing we like about it is the cockpit. It's a big cockpit. Bigger cockpit than, like, the Tolly Crafts. I mean, you could actually fish out here. It looks like it comes with a ladder for a dock. Busted up some. Dive platform's been dinged a few times. Yeah, we're up top. The doors are in pretty good shape. Not a lot of corrosion. 
Pin back, nice hardware. Isenglass is pretty nice. Yeah, sorry about that. The uh, Isenglass is pretty clear, it's not bad. You want to see if it starts? The owner gave us permission. So this is interesting. The radar uh, has a hinge here and a hinge here in these two. So I guess you could pull this pin and the radar arch would, pi would pivot backwards. Or you could pull the back pin and the radar arch would pivot forward. I don't know why you'd want to pivot forward. Maybe it's just to take the whole thing off for transportation. Pull both pins, the whole radar arch would come off. So there's a davit system for the dinghy on the back. So it's got new Garmin. Yeah, I have to roll it. Careful not to crack it. Looks like new Garmin's 12 inch touchscreens. There's two of them. I think one's, one's for radar. Uh, it's got hydraulic controls. So they're real smooth. So they pump hydraulic fluid down to a, like a solenoid down on the bottom. Careful, I don't crack. And then the solenoid, hydraulic solenoid shifts your transmission. Some holes where there used to be some uh, equipment. Garmin radio. There we go. Get that off. So that looks new. Okay. It's got a Simrad autopilot. Yeah. That looks that looks relatively new. Yeah. I think it's a twenty. So this is the windless trim tabs. I don't see the gauges are in pretty good shape. Nice. Call down below. Yeah, could you send up some cocktails to the bridge? Thank you. I'll try to figure out how to get power up here. Check out these garments. See how they work. So we're on the uh, sun deck sink storage U-line ice maker. It's all frozen up. Plenty of headroom. I can stand everywhere in here. Still wants to go down. This is for our Davit system to swing the dinghy out. Excuse me. You gotta stay out here. You gotta stay out here. You stay. Alright, let's see if I can come down without hitting my head. Worried about the what? Yeah. So lower helm, the generator is a Northern Lights, which is a good brand, 1631. The port engine has 3127, but the starboard engine has 5758. I asked him uh, how that happened and he doesn't know. Looks like an old... Uh, depth finder so let's give her a try uh, that fired up fast right up both of them go we'll see if it's peeing so 
So Michelle gave us the thumbs up on the ping. Uh, so we're neutral. We'll uh, see what our water temperature comes up to. Give it a second to warm up. Here's some of the issues, like this veneer. That's some water damage here. So like pieces are falling down. There's been some water damage here. Could have been from the AC units, because there's an AC unit right here. But like this is all real soft. a little bit of discoloration under the windows but nothing too major doesn't look too bad so one thing I really like about the boat is it's got this uh, holly teak floors there's a access hatch here there another one there another one there and then one back here so there's five you remove this table this carpet this whole floor comes up and you can stand between the engines and uh, you know you have access to the top of the engines I don't know if you had not have access to the side this is an access hole for the uh, the upward uh, fuel tanks one on that side there's a 250 gallon fuel here 250 gallons here and in the back there's to 150 gallons so that's five 800 800 gallon so it's a down galley electric stove trash compactor refrigerator is not the right one he's going to get another one somebody put this in as a temporary thing uh, the wood's all in pretty good shape electrical panel oh there it is yeah, so they do a real nice job with all these wiring labels. The wiring looks pretty neat. Back of the panel, good access. Take a look in the engine room. 3208 Caterpillars, 370 horsepower. One of the 250 gallon tanks. They got sight readings so you can check your fuel. There's another one on the other side. All those hatches come up up above. So going forward, forward head. Uh, let's see what's in here. Yeah, it's a wet head. stateroom it's got a little bench you can sit on and do your homework got the phone so you can call everybody upstairs let them know what you're doing didn't see too much water damage here green ACs one forward one mid one aft. The woodwork's nice. I mean, it's pretty nice. Like up above, those are access to your uh, wiper blades. The electronics I like. The aluminum fuel tanks I like. Smell a little exhaust. I don't see any. Of course, the engines are running, but yeah, I smell a little exhaust down here. And I don't see any carbon monoxide. Another desk. Stand up. Head. 
shower, new toilets, fresh water, Raritan uh, elites, I think they call them. Elegance. So that's nice. Yeah, I wish there was a carbon monoxide sensor. I'd be curious if it's going off right now. <clears throat> Looks like there used to be one there. They probably get tired of turning it on and off. Uh, third AC unit, access port. Under here is supposed to be access to your water tank. We'll try to take a look at that. Okay, so we're under the aft bed. There's two aluminum tanks. I don't know if they're water or fuel. But, oops, they're definitely aluminum because I use my magnet and they don't stick. That's good news. This is strange. The throttle on the starboard side catches right away. The port side, and I don't know, this is the slave side, but the sink is turned off. This doesn't engage till way up there. Starboard side hits right away. I'm not sure if that's just an adjustment. So the windless light is on. We're going to go check the uh, windless just to see if it moves anyways. Oops. So here's the windless. I got the switch on. Let's try going down. Nothing. So maybe something's not switched. Okay, something's beeping up here. Yeah, yes, alarm. So that's turned on now. That was not on earlier. I found the switch downstairs. Sonar's not working. I'm guessing this to the radar. Autopilot is very useful. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, I have to do some reading on that. I don't see anything happening there. Let's see if we can get to sonar on these. No. So I'm getting the GPS, but I can't get sonar on either side. Okay. Well, they turn on anyways. Well, temperature's not spiking, so I guess they're cooling okay. Let's see if the engine shutoff works from up top. Yep. So I was talking about the headroom. I finally hit my head somewhere. Speaker. Yeah, they put a speaker right by the door. That's gonna go. But all these other uh, handrails and stuff, I got plenty of head clearance. See? Look. And I got my shoes on. So I'm just clearing. So I am just hitting here. But over here, I'm clear. So the headroom's pretty good. Okay, so what do you think? I like it. Well, tell everybody what you just found out about the blisters, how much it's going to cost. Oh, he doesn't know, but about probably three to five hundred a foot. So I couldn't get the windlass to work, so I'm going to put the windlass switch off. Rudder indicator. Stereo intercom. VHF radio, GPS, radar, depth log, I don't think we need on, I'm trying to remember what I turned on and what I turned off, engine room, anchor lights off, running lights, cockpit lights, sun deck lights, engine room lights off, 
aft cabin lights, probably one on salon galley. Those were all fresh water pump is turned off because the we believe Michelle called Amy and David. They said the two tanks under the back bed are water tanks. They're both empty. And as far as we know, there's no water connected to the boat. There isn't. So that's why the water here is just gurgling. We're not getting anything. We're on shore power now. We could, you want to switch to Jenny? Well, should we turn the ACs off first? No. Nah. Stove is off. We haven't tried that. Microwave says it's on. It, it works. I didn't try this. It works. Yeah. Ice maker, galley outlets, AC outlets, AC lights, battery charger. Ice maker. Generator. This must be the old generator. The start stop is here. I think the new. I don't know how new that generator is. I think it's newer. 2017. I think. 2017. Water heaters off. Refrigerators on. Dishwashers off. Trash compactors off. Washer dryer off. Forward air conditioner. Salon aft AC. So generators running. Shut off those ACs. Let's switch. Switch to the generator. Oh, autopilot's off. Trim tabs off. This is the DC panel, so electric head on. I guess there's no water to flush with, so. AC's working? Yep. So we got 124 volts. Drawing 13, just jumped up to 20 because the ACs are kicking on. That's the Northern Star generator running. I don't know if you can see that. So those are the amps. 124 volts. These are AC. These are the DCs. So it seems to be working. Generator's running. It's nice and quiet. Generators all the way in the back. Northern lights. Temperature staying good. And it's blowing cold. Let's see how cold. Five degrees. That's good. The bed looks too small. It's a lot bigger than our other bed. I think we should get a bigger bed. Yeah, we could get rid of these. All right, we're heading back to St. Augustine. She wants to try the stove, so we got to find the AC power stove on. It's heating up. We'd get rid of that. We gotta put in propane. Oh, we're all working. There's a couple soft spots we found in there. We're in the cockpit, by the way. Hey, right, what are you doing? Checking for something. I think you can hit it harder than that.
the bud Wrightsville Beach North Carolina could be agape too we got to figure out how much to offer with uh, the blisters and that's a scary thing it's gonna need to be painted there's so much damage on the other side from uh, like these portholes that have to be redone blisters repaired and probably painted so he said he was gonna have a haul out for a paint job I wonder while he does if we get an estimate and have uh, have somebody come and look at the blisters while he's doing a haul out for a paint job we'll see Man, it's as hot in uh, North Carolina as it is in Florida. Well, we didn't say no to the boat, but we're going to slap together a video about the boat. We'll post it. You guys, give us a thumbs up if you like the boat. We don't know. There's a lot of stuff we don't know about the boat. We got to call in to the broker to talk to the owner to call us back, find out why there's a differential between the uh, engine hours. Michelle did some research, come to find out it was in the Keys during Hurricane Ian. Ian. Uh, it got some damage done to it, so it had paint. So maybe the paint job that they did is what's bubbling up and it's not blisters from water. Could have been a bad paint job from Hurricane Ian, but makes you wonder, well, what happened during Hurricane Ian? Did it just get rubbed and scratched? Or did it have a big giant hole in it? And was it half sunk? Because about the same time they got a new generator. Why? Was the generator underwater? Don't know. All right.